Aloha, and welcome back to Figments on Reality. I'm Dan Leaf. I go by Fig, and I've been on vacation for over two weeks, and it was great. I'm going to have to do that again. It's a concept I wasn't that familiar with, but in retrospect, I've been missing a lot. Before I get to the, the primary topic of the show, I want to talk on reality about something that concerns me a great deal, and that was the missteps made by President Biden and Secretary of Defense Austin in stating our China policy with President Biden saying we were absolutely committed to the defense of Taiwan if uh, China attacked. Now, I'm not against that as a matter of principle. We have an obligation covered in the Taiwan Relations Act, but he didn't maintain the strategic ambiguity of it. And it, it reminded me of a conversation I had one-on-one -on -one with President George W. Bush when I was still on active duty. And President Bush asked me, if conflict with China was inevitable. And I said, well, of course not. And gave him some reasons why. And I said, but it could still happen, Mr. President, because uh, it could happen like most wars happen through a series of miscalculations, misinterpretations, and misunderstandings. And I think that's very much the case. That was part of our involvement in Korea and in Iraq where, uh, Kim Il-sung and uh, Saddam Hussein both did not, ex each did not expect the United States to enter the conflict, and we did. And this is kind of the opposite of that, because President Biden said we would defend Taiwan, and in the current environment where China is aggressively asserting itself and its claim to the island of Taiwan, um, that could drive it to conflict, not deter it from conflict. So uh, it's a big mistake. I'll be watching this. I may dedicate a future on reality to the China-Taiwan situation uh, because it could have far-reaching impacts. I hope not, but it could. So let's get to the real topic of today's show. And that's this road trip that my family took and the reflections that it led me to in America. Now, you know those Annoying relatives who have you over and show you the pictures of their vacation. Yes, I'm absolutely going to do that. But when I started up my file sharing app, I found that I had added 648 files. So be glad that I won't show you all 648 photos that we took. And then, frankly, that's the tip of the photographic iceberg because we took a lot of pictures. It was a great trip family, uh, baseball fun, sites, uh, memorials and museums. So let me quickly take you through what we did. We uh, flew into Wisconsin and went to two Brewers games. And there I am with my family and next to me is my twin sister and behind her, her husband, Leon. Uh, it was great to see them. We tailgated and did all the baseball things. The weather, as you can see, was beautiful. The whole trip, the, the weather was beautiful, by the way. And uh, we did that. By the way, if you saw my postseason warm up figments, The Power of Imagination with Ross Rowley, you may have noticed that I got every single pick wrong, every one. Now, how's that even possible? I picked the wrong winners of the wildcard games and of each of the division series. So, oh well, next year. It's probably good the Brewers were out. No, that's never good, but it allowed me to focus on the road trip. So, from Milwaukee, we went down to Chicago, not my favorite city, but still a cool place to visit, and then on to uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, and we saw the Speedway exhibit in our museum, which doesn't sound like much uh, unless you like cars, as I do, but it was really pretty fascinating looking at the technological evolution of the uh, race cars that race at Indian. Um, I think the family enjoyed that maybe more than I expected, but they enjoyed another museum much more than I expected. They humored me with a stop in near Dayton at the United, the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force, my former service. It's like going home. Here you see a picture of the XB-70, maybe the most beautiful airplane ever built. Um, and uh, my wife in particular found this museum fascinating because it does what the great museums do. It tells the story. It just doesn't display the stuff. And we wish we had more time. I basically had to drag her out of there. Uh, it's not technology alone. They do a fantastic job of telling the human story 
of the advancement of air and space power in the U.S. If you're ever in the Dayton area, don't miss it and do allow uh, plenty of time. From there, we drove to the east, headed towards Yorktown, Virginia, to see my son, his wife, and their two very cute dogs were getting a dog. Um, and the scenery was fabulous. And this was Alejandra and Alejo's uh, first road trip. Here you see the Skyline Drive. I have dozens of photos of the tremendous drive along the Skyline Drive near uh, DC and Virginia, in Virginia. Another must see. We stopped, uh, did this road trip, American style, something that they had never experienced, stopping along the way to eat and find a hotel. And I have to tell a story. My wife is a sophisticated woman, traveled extensively, worked in government for 22 years, and absolutely not a country bumpkin. But when we stopped for breakfast in uh, Charleston, West Virginia, she was enthralled with the little restaurant we found because it had very quaint decor, lots of memorabilia, signs, photos, artifacts from the past. It was very cool and she liked it a lot. And as we left, she said, this is a unique restaurant and mentioned uh, one of our favorites in Santiago, Chile, that's similar, but, but not on the same scale. And I said, yes, it is a very unique restaurant. And I took out my phone and checked and I said, and there are only 659 just like it. Cracker Barrel is a great place to get good food and see a lot of Americana. Uh, we drove on down uh, to uh, Yorktown visited the Yorktown battlefield, uh, another great uh, museum and bit of our history, and later went to uh, Nauticus in uh, Norfolk and to the Jamestown settlement. Uh, I, I'd put certainly Yorktown and Jamestown as things you've got to see to appreciate our history, and I'll share more on that in our reflections. And spent a wonderful time with the my son, his wife, and the dogs, as I said, it, it couldn't have been a better visit. And then we headed up to the DC area where my uh, daughter lives. Uh, there's Alejandra with the Washington Monument. Again, a beautiful day. We're so blessed with the weather and the statue near the uh, wall, the Vietnam Memorial. And uh, she, we walked the entire mall, uh, Washington Mall on this gorgeous day stopped by the Lincoln Memorial. I commented to her that I had never visited the Lincoln Memorial. And she said, half jokingly, what kind of a citizen are you? And I said, well, I was kind of busy defending our country, which is true, but I wish I'd gone there earlier and had more time to reflect on Lincoln, the man, and, and that memorial captures him so well. Uh, we also went to the National Museum of Natural History I had a couple of meetings and they went to other museums and we had a great visit with uh, my daughter who's gonna be my next guest on uh, Figments, The Power of Imagination. And uh, it, it was just a wonderful time in our nation's capital to reflect upon it. And then we took a, a brief, not so, drive back to Chicago. Uh, here's a, a screenshot of the 10 hour and 16 minute 700 mile drive back to Chicago. Uh, this was a straight through shot uh, to catch our flight on time. And, um, and it was yet another experience sharing the driving with Alejo and uh, uh, figuring out toll roads and doing all that with a little bit of rain. But again, we're very fortunate on uh, the weather. And finally, we made it back to Honolulu via United Airlines. There we are properly masked. More on that later. And in short, it was a great chance to see the entire Eastern United States. Well, it's maybe a quarter of the Eastern United States, if that. But to see a lot about our country, its development, its innovation, its history, uh, and the struggles to make it what it is today. And, um, I'll share my reflections on that right after a brief, brief break to tell you about the show next week. Now, the folks at Think Tech Hawaii, who I think do a fabulous job on this, uh, give the host some guidance. And one of them is you should almost never have a, an immediate family member on. I'm going to break that clearly by having my daughter on to talk about imagining effective leadership. Why am I going to do that? Well, leadership has been her job for a long time. She's an expert at it and has thought a lot about it. And she's a much better leader than her dad. 
She's led it in the Air Force as a commander in industry, as a leadership consultant, and now as a manager at Google. Uh, and I know her views will not represent Google policy because I'll make that disclaimer, but she'll offer you some thoughts on leadership that I think uh, you'll find useful because she's good at it and has thought about it, studied it, and now applies that in the corporate world. Back to the road trip observations. I've got a list here and I'm gonna talk about each of these. And uh, there they are. Let me start with what a beautiful country the United States of America is. And I'm getting goosebumps or as we say in Hawaii, chicken skin right now thinking about it. It is a beautiful country, uh, fall colors in particular, but um, it's beautiful and it's in pretty good shape. You know, we hear a lot about the crumbling infrastructure and certainly there was construction the entire way, but it's, it's a beautiful country in good shape. And uh, Chicago was surprisingly beautiful. I have to say that even though as a Packer fan, I have to throw in that the bears still suck, uh, but uh, Chicago is a, a great city. We uh, ran through the marathon. We didn't run in the Chicago marathon. We sprinted across the street to get to uh, the biggest Starbucks in the world. Um, the entire drive was fabulous, especially Skyline Drive. And then of course, along the Chesapeake, there's uh, so much to see. It's a beautiful country. And if you haven't seen parts of it for a while, it, it helps to get refreshed and be reminded of how blessed Americans are. And I've been to 71 other countries, I think, and we're very fortunate. Each has their own beauty. The next observation is that baseball is better in person. Even though my predictions were wrong, and even though the Milwaukee Brewers aren't playing in the, the World Series, it was great to see a couple of games in person at American Family Field there in Milwaukee. And uh, I may have called it Miller Park earlier because it just became American Family Field. Uh, Alejandro is not much of a baseball fan, more, much more Green Bay Packers, much more. But having seen it in person in three dimensions with the crowd, with all that is baseball, she gets it now. And that's good for me since I watch at least 162 games a year uh, in one way or another. Uh, it's a great experience. And I, it's uh, um, really uh, worth seeing in person. I had a question from a viewer that just popped up in the chat window. Weren't you worried about COVID when you attended the baseball games with 40 plus thousand of my closest fans at each game? Uh, no, for a couple of reasons. One, we're very careful as a family. Uh, two, we're all vaccinated. I'm thrice vaccinated and Alejandro and Alejo have both gotten their full Pfizer regime. Um, and three, those sporting events, contrary to predictions, have not become super spreader events, which is interesting. Um, so whether we were in the crowd or out tailgating with high school friends, which was another uniquely American experience for the Chilean members of my family, um, no, I wasn't worried. We were careful, but not extremely, not uh, wildly careful. And we enjoyed the games and we all feel fine, except for jet lag. Um, so baseball is better in person. Uh, another observation was about the American people. And we haven't unpacked all our memories from this trip, but I think uh, that Alejandro and Alejo will share that American, friendly, uh, American people are friendly and nice and kind. And we experience that in every setting, uh, just the warmth, uh, the welcoming nature of, of all people, regardless of color. And that was reassuring and made me proud of the American people such as they are. And, and that probably was the most reassuring thing to answer another viewer question. Thanks viewers. Um, that was probably the most reassuring thing was our people and the interaction with them and the lack of vitriol, one of my least favorite things and the, just the, the niceness of them. That said, there are times that they're not that nice. And I list, I think, three of them. And one of it is when they're driving. And special shout out to that guy in the white, white SUV at O'Hare Airport as we were trying to get into the hotel. Um, 
uh, I'm spoiled by the aloha spirit. We don't use our horns here in Hawaii, except in, a, in emergency. And the only time you get negative feedback is if you don't thank somebody for letting you in to a lane in traffic, which they always do. Um, I didn't find that worked in the Chicago outskirts or on the Beltway in, in Washington, DC. Oh, well, makes me enjoy Hawaii even more. Um, they're not that nice when they talk politics. And I blame the politicians, frankly, because they're fueling it. Our, our politicians are, I believe, of both parties, fueling the rancor amongst the people, and they should do better. I don't think me saying that on my humble little webcast will change that, but they should do better. It's not good for our country in any way. And the fact that we disagree on political issues should not should not uh, result in the kind of anger that I saw about politics. Again, I, I blame those in politics, whether they're elected or not, for feeling that for their own purposes. Their purpose should be the country and um, not uh, creating a divide so they can win an election or get something passed. Another area where folks aren't very nice, and this was striking, probably the most striking thing on the trip, is they're not very nice about the all of the mandates re related to COVID. Uh, it, it's the disconnect is was startling. Uh, the guidance on masks varies widely from state to state, municipality to municipality, and the adherence to those mandates is spotty at best. It's worse than that. It's comical in a tragic, tragic sort of a way. Um, and, and the thing I noticed most was the mask rebels, who, by the way, look ridiculous. So if you're a mask rebel, trust me, you look ridic ridiculous. I don't know if they work or not. I don't know if the masks that people wear work or not. I don't care. Be considerate. Wear your mask. Shut up. Enjoy the day. And when you don't have to, don't. Uh, but those who aggressively either don't wear a mask or wear a mask incorrectly and kind of flaunt it, come on, man. You're not proving anything except that you're annoying. I found it annoying uh, and troubling. But I understand why it is. It's because the guidance is so silly. Uh, on our flight, to our flights to and from Hawaii, or to the mainland and back, I guess, to be more accurate. United gave the following guidance that masks will be worn at all times, and I think this is what the federal mandate says, including between sips and bites. As far as I can tell, 0.0% of the people were adhering to the sips and bites guidance. And who, who can blame them? <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's it's just laughable guidance, and uh, and it's not helping. It's not helping motivate people to get vaccines or take to take precautions that really work. And there's another mandate that um, doesn't help, and that's the plexiglass. Now it's been shown. I did my research on the internet. It's been shown that the plexiglass actually stifles airflow and can increase the probability of virus spread. Yet, I think because they're afraid not to, and because it was guides, there is plexiglass everywhere, barriers everywhere between servers, cashiers, different clients. And, and we know that it doesn't work, so why haven't we had some guidance to take it down? Uh, when you have these kinds of sips and bites guidance and plexiglass that no longer is, seen, is shown to work, uh, people are not going to take anything seriously, including vaccines. I'm, now, I believe vaccines work, and I'm pretty sure that the guidance shows it. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the federal vaccine mandate for government employees, military, and um, and contractors. I've already gotten vaccinated, so I don't care very much about it. Uh, but but that's the serious stuff. The rubber meets the road at vaccination. It doesn't at plexiglass or sips and bites. And uh, the government has only, the governments, 
national, federal, um, state, and local have only themselves to blame for muddying the waters and creating a situation that fuels rather than ends the COVID spread. So, uh, him, and again, if all of the science says that mass sporting events are super spreaders, why hasn't that been the case? Because the Milwaukee Brewers have not contacted me about any breakout outbreak rather related to the games that we went to, and, and that's not happening. Um, we need to get our act together. Our governments need to get their act together and pare it down to just the things that really matter, vaccines. Vaccines and vaccines and encourage people, not mandate it. Now, on the military mandate, I will make an on-reality comment on that. I, I think it came far too late. I think that's due to lawyers being involved in the process. And uh, if I were king or whatever, I would have said at the outset when it was approved for emergency use, all right, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and space guardians, get your vaccines, it's mandatory. Uh, I think the lawyers got involved and said, well, it's just emergency approval. And I, I've got 12 anthrax vaccinations from my military experience and it hasn't affected me much. Uh, but if they had said from the outset, get the vaccines, I don't think we'd see the challenge that the military is facing in gaining compliance now. We gave too much time uh, for the barracks lawyers to make up reasons not to get vaccines. Now there are legitimate medical and perhaps religious reasons not to, but I don't think the legitimate reasons are the problem at all. So um, enough on COVID. Let's get, get it done, get vaccinated if you haven't, please. The next observation is that you can never know enough of our history. And I was not a good student in anything, including history. And uh, that's not gonna change now, but this trip to all the museums and memorials, pardon me, pardon me um, reinforce that uh, in the beautiful museums, memorials and historical sites reminded me that we have to make sure the beauty endures of our nation. Um, and that the history isn't changed because the accurate history matters. And remember that the names will never change, whether they're Lincoln's name on his memorial or others, Jefferson, uh, an issue of concern in um, New York City right now, uh, the, the names don't change. And that's certainly true on the um, Vietnam Memorial where I found the name of uh, Major Robert Cozart. Uh, he uh, wore his bracelet for many years in the 70s until it finally wore out. And those who have sacrificed for our freedom, for the life that we enjoy, ought to be remembered, regardless of the circumstances. The museums and memorials are particularly important in story storytelling. As I said, the Air Force Museum does a really tremendous job of telling the story of innovation. Um, Speedway too, and natural history, of course, but, but it's not the stuff that matters. You can't put today into context if you don't have an appreciation for how we got here. Whatever your views are, you have to have the context. And what's so troubling about some of the public discourse these days is that, that items influenced heavily by our past are taken out of or taken uh, or absent from context of how we got here. It's not perfect, no country is, um, but we can't forget it. Uh, and we can't cancel history because it makes us uncomfortable. And some elements of our history do make us uncom uncomfortable. I've seen one place in the world that does a better job than any other of, um, of putting that history in uh, into context, and that's Taiwan. I went to two museums or memorial, I guess they're museums, parks in Taiwan. Um, one addressing the uh, indigenous people of Taiwan, who even into the late or early 20th century were cannibals, headhunters. And uh, they have a very thoughtful presentation there in Ulai near Taipei 
of of the kind of people they were, and it does it it put it into context of the times. Uh, they also have a museum or a a location on Green Island where political prisoners were held during the Chiang Kai Shek period in Taiwan. And again, it's uncomfortable stuff, but put in context and uh, not blaming, shaming, but describing that history and helping us not repeat it, helping the people of Taiwan not repeat it. We can do that with the monuments and memorials that are currently simply being removed. That's not the answer. Um, those who forget history or ignore it are doomed to repeat it. So uh, the museums we went to were reassuring and inspiring. And I want to know more and we'll make another road trip sometime soon. The last observation is that America is hiring. <laughs> it was incredible. I don't think we stopped at a single restaurant, hotel, anywhere. Uh, or anything else, any other kind of shop that didn't have a we're hiring, help wanted sign out. Uh, in fact, as we walked my granddaughters to their daycare school, um, there was a huge sign in Spanish saying we're hiring and I encouraged Alejo to apply, but you know he wanted to come back and go to school here at the University of Hawaii, I understand that. Everywhere they are hiring, which makes you wonder why we're so short of the help we need. And I don't have the solution for that, but, but I suspect it has something to do with incentives. And that brings me to my last thought about taxes. And of course, there's a huge bill in Congress right now. This isn't a political show. So uh, all I'll say is um, those are tax dollars, folks. I'd like to see a public law that says uh, that politicians must refer to federal money as our money and acknowledge that it came from the taxpayers because we're not incentivized to pay taxes. I've paid taxes for 40 or 50 years. Shouldn't I at least get a lapel pin that says that? Uh, shouldn't there be something that makes our contribution to the governance of the United States uh, recognizable and worth talking about? It isn't. So um, listen up, Washington. If you're going to pass a law, I, I heard a congressman on a radio show talking about the Washington football team and its troubles with the Dan Snyder ownership era. Okay, that's not the biggest problem, people in America. It might be a problem. That is absolutely not the biggest problem. Take care of your taxpayers, whatever party you're in, and acknowledge that everything you're able to do is thanks to the largesse of, largesse of law-abiding tax-paying citizens. So, I don't expect that to change. I won't be looking for my lapel pin in the mail, but I will be back for Figments, the Power of Imagination with my daughter Yating, the leadership guru, in a week at two o'clock on uh, Monday, November 9th, I think it is, That's what, or November 1st, rather. And I look forward to sharing that with uh, her. And finally, let me give a shout out to the folks at ThinkTech who make this possible and they can only make it possible through, through your donations. So please support this wonderful nonprofit and uh, join me next week for Figments, The Power of Imagination. Aloha. <laughs>